no. No, no, I never felt better in my life. Sleep is strictly for the birds, so let the birds sleep. I must have fallen asleep. Yeah, last night outside Chicago. I don't have any problem shooting other people, kid, just you. Martin Milner, the classic American heartthrob of the hit TV shows Route 66 and Adam 12, embodied the wholesome all-American image. From humble beginnings in Detroit to the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Milner became a household name. Yet, off-camera, his life was a turbulent sea of hidden battles, personal tragedies, and remarkable resilience. Join us as we delve into the triumphs and hidden struggles of Martin Milner, a man whose journey was as captivating as the characters he portrayed. Detroit to Hollywood. Martin Milner's journey into the world of acting and entertainment began at an early age. He was born on December 28, 1931 in Detroit, Michigan, to parents Sam and Mildred Milner. His father worked in the film industry as a distributor, while his mother was a dancer for the Paramount Theater Circuit. This exposed young Martin to show business from the start. When Martin was just nine years old, his family moved from the bustling city of Detroit, which was a hub for the burgeoning auto industry, to the vibrant and scenic city of Seattle, Washington. It was in Seattle that Milner's passion for performing first took root. At the precocious age of 15, he joined the Cornish Playhouse's Children's Theater Group. Here, the impressionable and talented Milner learned the basics of theater, honing his skills and discovering his love of acting and entertaining others. By embracing the opportunities around him at such a young age, That's my present for Mom. I thought I'd take some pictures of you. Milner set the stage for his future success. After getting a small taste of the theater world in Seattle, Milner's appetite for acting only grew. When he was 17 years old, his family made the over 1,700-mile move down the picturesque Pacific coast from Seattle to the epicenter of the entertainment world. Hollywood, California. Milner's father's profession as a film distributor necessitated the move south to the heart of the movie business. <laughs> I must have fallen asleep. Yeah, last night outside Chicago. Once in Hollywood, Milner hit the ground running, quickly getting representation by an agent who saw his potential as a rising star. This led to his first major career breakthrough when he was chosen at just 17 years old to take on a notable role in the Warner Brothers film Life with Father in 1947. Although only a supporting part, this first on-screen role in a major studio production gave Milner invaluable experience and got his foot in the door. Milner continued honing his skills throughout his high school years by taking drama classes at North Hollywood High School, where he immersed himself in productions, putting the skills learned at the Cornish Playhouse to use. He graduated in 1949, but even with a diploma in hand, Milner could not ignore the call of the bright lights and big screens. He enrolled at the University of Southern California California to study theater, appearing in campus productions and steeping himself in the craft. However, his eagerness for real-world experience led him to drop out after only a year in 1950, at just 19 years old. He set off to pursue his acting dreams full-time, laying the foundations for an over five-decade-long prolific career. Getting settled, I see. Oh, uh, my first nameplate. Lights, camera, ambition. Martin Milner spent the early 1950s tirelessly working to build up his professional acting resume and make a name for himself. In 1950, he landed his first television role on the series The Lone Ranger. This marked his inaugural step into the burgeoning world of television, which was rapidly expanding in popularity. Later that same year, just shy of his 19th birthday, Milner got the opportunity to work alongside legendary star John Wayne in the war film Sands of Iwo Jima. This role, albeit small, no, no, I never felt better in my life. Sleep is strictly for the birds, so let the birds sleep. Gave him valuable experience in a major Hollywood production. Milner's big break came in 1950, when he was cast as Drexel Potter on the American broadcasting company sitcom, The Stu Irwin Show. Starring as a regular on a network TV series was a major accomplishment and helped put Milner on the map. This sitcom role also led to Milner meeting and working with Jack Webb, who became an important mentor and colleague. Milner made appearances on Webb's landmark crime series Dragnet, gaining notoriety. In 1952, at the age of 21, Milner made the decision to enlist in the United States Army for two years. While in the Army, Milner was not about to let his acting skills go to waste. He worked entertaining the troops, directing training films and honing his craft. Milner also continued to collaborate with Jack Webb on the Dragnet radio show on weekends. After completing his military service in 1954, Milner dove back into acting
acting headfirst. He landed a role as Bruce Don Marshall on the sitcom The Life of Riley, appearing in episodes between 1953 and 1958. During this time, he also began working frequently in television commercials, demonstrating his diversity as a performer. It was also in the 1950s that Milner made his debut on the widescreen in prominent supporting roles in movies like 1955's Pete Kelly's Blues and 1956's Screaming Eagles. By leveraging his boyish good looks, affable charm, and versatility, Milner made a name for himself during this prolific decade, paving the way for even bigger things to come. I don't even know your name. Who should I not tell her I didn't talk to? Route 66. Ride to Stardom. After steady work through the 1950s, the next decade would bring Martin Milner his biggest breakout when he landed the iconic role of Todd Stiles on the television series Route 66 in 1960. This show would shoot Milner into the limelight and allow him to showcase his full talents as a lead actor. Route 66 followed Todd and his friend Buzz as they traveled across the vast landscapes of America in Todd's Corvette convertible searching for adventure. When was the last time you shouted out in anger, or purred with pleasure, or lit a firecracker, or blew a party horn? Milner perfectly embodied the restless spirit of his character and of young people of the era who yearned to break free from constraint and find meaning on the open road. Milner brought Todd to life with raw honesty and complexity. His thoughtful, introspective nature and turbulent relationship with his wealthy father resonated with audiences. Milner's nuanced performance made Todd relatable and helped capture the zeitgeist of the period. Fans connected with Milner's portrayal of Todd's ambivalence, his keen insights into people, and his strong moral compass. For four years from 1960 to 1964, Go catch an early movie. I've seen everything in town. Milner starred on Route 66 alongside co-star George Maharis. He was featured in 116 episodes filmed on location across the U.S. This was a unique filming experience that allowed Milner to showcase his acting chops against the backdrop of the picturesque American landscape. The show earned widespread acclaim and became one of the most popular and quintessential shows of the era. Milner's complex and authentic performance as Todd earned him widespread praise from critics and cemented his status as a television star. He was lauded for his subtle emotive acting and ability to draw out the nuances of his characters. This iconic role catapulted Milner into fame and popularity. He became a household name across America, synonymous with the image of the introspective and principled young wanderer. Milner's acclaimed portrayal of Todd on Route 66 was truly a career-defining role that made him a star. Whatever happened to Colonel Zaman, and who cares? <laughs> Life, love, and loss. Though Martin Milner enjoyed tremendous acclaim and success during his storied acting career, two weeks until she starts shooting him. Wardrobe fittings, makeup tests, publicity stills, you know. His personal life faced profound tragedy and loss. Milner was married twice during his lifetime. His first wife was Judith Bess Jones, whom he married in 1957 after meeting her the previous year at a Hollywood dinner party. The couple had four children together and were married for over 15 years before divorcing in the early 1970s. Milner found love again with his second wife, Patricia Ann Parson, whom he married in 1977. The two remained together for the rest of Milner's life until his passing in 2015. By all accounts, he was a dedicated husband and father who cherished his family. However, in 2004, Milner and his family faced unfathomable grief when Milner's oldest daughter Amy, from his first marriage, passed away at the young age of 43. Amy died after a battle with acute myeloid leukemia. She was first diagnosed with aggressive blood cancer in February 2003. Amy's sudden illness and untimely death were undoubtedly a crushing loss for Milner and his family. By many accounts, Milner felt profound regret that he had not spent more time with his daughter before her sickness. Her rapid health decline left little opportunity for reconciliation. Milner spoke openly about his guilt over not being as involved a father to Amy as he could have been, consumed as he was with the demands of his acting career. He carried this remorse with him for the remainder of his life following Amy's death in the late 2004. The loss of a child is an unthinkable tragedy for any parent. For Milner, the grief over Amy's death cast a pall over his later years. It served as a reminder that professional success means little in the face of personal loss. Though he continued working, colleagues said Milner was never quite the same cheerful presence after his daughter's passing. Adam 12 and beyond. Let's go, huh? I want to see the watch commander before roll call. 
Though Martin Milner will forever be remembered for his star-making turn on Route 66, his acting career spanned over 50 years and included numerous other memorable roles across both the big and small screens. Milner leveraged his acclaimed performance as Todd to catapult himself into steady work and demonstrate his impressive range as a performer. One of Milner's most notable roles came just a few years after Route 66 ended, when he stepped into the shoes of Officer Peter Joseph Pete Malloy on the police drama Adam 12 in 1968. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. This show became another signature part for Milner, establishing him as one of the most prominent and respected actors on television. Adam 12 marked the beginning of a seven-year stint playing Officer Malloy from 1968 to 1975, appearing in a total of 174 episodes. The show followed Malloy as a veteran cop partnered with Officer Jim Reed, played by Kent McCord. As Malloy, Milner turned in an incredibly nuanced performance highlighting the daily struggles faced by police officers with empathy and realism. Milner stood out for his ability to portray Malloy as a dedicated and experienced officer who maintained his compassion despite the gritty realities of the job. This complex character reminded audiences of Milner's talents and range. Adam 12 earned critical acclaim and further cemented Milner's place in the pantheon of great television actors. In addition to Adam 12, throughout the late 1960s and 1970s, Milner made numerous guest appearances on hit shows of the era. In a testament to his reputation as one of the most versatile actors in Hollywood, Mr. Wilson, let's all try working together here. What do you say? Oh, I always cooperate with the police, always. He took on roles in a wide array of genres, from westerns to crime dramas to lighthearted comedies. Some of the shows Milner lent his talents to during this prolific period included Run for Your Life, Columbo, The Virginian, The Rat Patrol, Police Story, Emergency, and many more. Directors knew they could count on Milner to deliver an engaging and thoughtful performance, regardless of the material. Milner also continued to appear in high-profile feature films, showcasing his talents on the silver screen. In 1968, he acted in Three Guns for Texas. In 1975, Milner returned to television starring as the lead in The Swiss Family Robinson. As patriarch Carl Robinson shipwrecked on a tropical island with his family, Milner got to highlight his talents in the adventure genre. The show capitalized on Milner's affable on-screen presence and his ability to anchor a production. Milner the multi-talent, directing, producing, and writing. Okay, you guys get back up on that front porch and stay there. We'll be back in a minute. Yes, sir. Martin Milner's creativity and passion for entertainment extended behind the scenes. In addition to his prolific acting career, he also contributed significantly to TV and film projects as a director, producer, and writer over the years. Milner relished these opportunities to be involved in diverse aspects of production. Milner's first major off-camera role came in 1960, when he stepped into the producer's chair for the satirical comedy film kittens go to college. He also acted in the movie. Just a few years later in 1962, Milner tried his hand at directing, helming an episode of the famed Route 66 series on which he also starred. Impressed by his work, the producers of Route 66 tapped Milner to direct four more episodes between 1963 and 1964. It was a remarkable opportunity for Milner to hone his directing skills on one of the most innovative and cinematic programs on television. Critics took note of his keen visual eye and creative set pieces. Milner's writing talents came to the forefront in 1963 when he penned two episodes of Route 66. His first script, Where There's a Will, There's a Way, explored complex themes of inheritance and family dynamics. These themes were expertly interwoven by Milner into an engaging storyline. The next year, Milner wrote his second Route 66 episode titled, Suppose I Said I Was the Queen of Spain. This time, Milner crafted a unique plot focused on a woman who concocts an elaborate backstory to avoid revealing her true origins. Milner proved adept at crafting clever yet poignant narratives. In the late 1960s, when Milner was starring on Adam 12, he both directed and wrote episodes for that acclaimed series as well. This demonstrated Milner's impressive range of talents on both sides of the camera. In total, he helmed three episodes and penned two episodes of Adam 12 in collaboration with creator Jack Webb. A cinematic and televisual journey. Not much point in checking it for prints, you've probably handled it quite a bit. 
In addition to his starring roles in iconic television shows like Route 66 and Adam 12, Martin Milner frequently appeared in a diverse array of other film and TV projects throughout his prolific career spanning over five decades. His extensive resume and work across mediums spoke to his reputation and versatility as one of the most sought-after character actors in the business. Milner accumulated over 150 credits in film and television from 1947 up through the 1990s. His roles ran the gamut from westerns to dramas to light-hearted comedies. He effortlessly transitioned between playing wholesome, sympathetic characters and more sinister, complicated figures. Some of Milner's most notable film appearances came in the late 1950s at the height of his early career success. Well, I had a pretty big lunch today, but since we're supposed to look out for each other on this job, we'll put in for seven just as soon as we can. In 1957, he acted in the gritty drama Sweet Smell of Success, playing a young jazz guitarist who gets embroiled in the shady New York nightlife scene. That same year, he also co-starred in the comedic mystery Marjorie Morningstar. In a guest appearance, this time on Dial M for Murder by the Alfred Hitchcock Hour in 1954, Milner tackled the role of a policeman. Throughout his career, Milner thrilled audiences through these creepy, psychologically intense performances. Audiences also saw Milner on the big screen in 1960's 13 Ghosts and 1967's Valley of the Dolls, alongside screen legends like Patty Duke and Sharon Tate. Milner often provided a grounded, empathetic presence that balanced out more dramatic stars. From the golden age of live television in the 1950s to the proliferation of new networks and cable offerings in the 1980s and 90s, Milner made his mark across countless seminal shows. His work ethic, professionalism, and depth as an actor made him an ideal guest star time and again when producers needed to bolster their lineup. After over 50 years in the business, Milner amassed an unparalleled resume. The breadth of his film and television appearances spoke to his reputation as one of the most adaptable and reliable actors in the industry. His familiar presence graced the screens of generations of TV viewers. Circle of Stars Over his 50-plus years in the entertainment business, Martin Milner cultivated close friendships and professional relationships with many of the leading lights of Hollywood. By all accounts, he was remarkably well-liked and respected due to his warm personality, humor, and complete lack of pretense. One of Milner's closest industry friends was Jack Webb, who became both a mentor and frequent collaborator. They met in 1950 when Milner was just 19, and Webb cast him in minor roles on the radio version of Dragnet. The two formed a bond that would span decades. When Milner returned to Hollywood after serving in the military, he and Webb partnered again on the Dragnet TV series. This friendship paved the way for Milner to land his career-making role on Webb's Route 66 program in 1960. The pair enjoyed working together and mutual respect. Milner also became good friends with Route 66 co-star George Maharis during their four years filming on the road. Though they had little in common off-screen, they shared a unique bond from their adventures crisscrossing America. During his time on Adam 12, Milner grew very close to Kent McCord, who played his rookie partner, Officer Jim Reed. The two got along famously on set, which translated into an easy chemistry on camera. McCord said he learned a great deal from the generous guidance of Milner during his early career. When I saw the Major heading for the Everglades, he was flying strangely. Milner was godfather to McCord's daughter, showing the depth of their friendship. They remained tight even after Adam 12 wrapped, working together again in 1991 on a TV movie. In the late 1950s, Milner became neighbors with up-and-coming star James Garner, and the two couples socialized frequently. Milner and Garner shared a laid-back, jokester nature, and would often engage in friendly pranks and silly competitions on set. Later in his career, Milner guest starred on shows featuring friends like Robert Conrad and Angela Lansbury. Both stars commented on Milner's total lack of ego and willingness to help others shine. His humble, thoughtful presence endeared him to fellow actors. Milner also formed friendships with legends he acted alongside like John Wayne, William Powell, Jack Lemmon, and Peter Graves. Despite his own success, he never lost his awe of Hollywood greats. His unpretentiousness and generosity of spirit allowed him to form lasting bonds that anchored him over a long career in the limelight. Theater Performances while Martin Milner was best known for his film and television work, he was also an accomplished stage actor. Throughout his career, he appeared in numerous theater productions and even made his Broadway debut. Milner's extensive theater experience demonstrated his commanding stage presence and acting chops. 
In the late 1950s, Milner cut his teeth in live theater by joining the national tour of the Pulitzer Prize-winning courtroom drama, The Kane Mutiny Court Martial. I guess this just isn't my day. $200 suits, $5,000 rubies. It was excellent training for the young actor, requiring immense concentration and stamina to perfect the verbally dense role night after night. This experience prepared Milner for his Broadway bow in the original comedy, The 90 Day Mistress in 1967. Though the play had a short run, it fulfilled Milner's dream of headlining a production on the Great White Way. Critics praised his confident portrayal of a bachelor forced into a marriage of convenience. Milner returned to the Broadway stage in 1974 in a revival of the Tunnel of Love. The romantic farce provided Milner with the opportunity to show off his comedic and physical acting abilities. He was lauded for his spontaneity and commitment to getting laughs. In addition to Broadway, Milner also starred in productions at prominent regional theaters around the country. In 1971, he took top billing in a Philadelphia production of The Impossible Years. I don't know. He's too headstrong, too eager, too young, not loose enough. As a harried father, Milner mined the show's family situations for both humor and insight. Milner again charmed local audiences in Denver in 1973 when he appeared in the psychological drama My Daughter, Your Son. Reviewers singled him out for bringing sincerity and restraint to a potentially melodramatic role. Milner's extensive theater work spoke to his dedication to his craft and his classical training. He honed techniques like projecting his voice, conveying meaning through subtle gestures, and developing an intimate rapport with the audience. This served him well in his film and TV work. Though the stage only made up a portion of Milner's career, it was a crucial component. His shining theatrical performances revealed him to be a well-rounded and formidable actor at home in any medium. For Martin Milner, acting meant the world. Dedication until the end. Even as he entered the twilight of his life and career, Martin Milner never lost his passion and dedication to the craft of acting. While many performers would have gladly rested on their laurels or slipped into retirement, Milner continued to embrace opportunities to challenge himself as an actor up until the very end. In the 1980s and 1990s, as Milner entered his 50s and 60s, he took on occasional acting roles mostly in made-for-TV movies and limited series. Doing acrobatics, doing things to his plane as though he wanted to fly the wings off. While it was a slower pace than the prolific output of his early career, Milner remained committed to selecting projects that excited him. In 1990, Milner starred in the TV movie Nashville Beat, about a cop who relocates to become a country music star proving he could still carry major productions. Milner turned in a surprisingly convincing performance as a rugged, determined singer despite being nearly 60. These selective but substantial roles demonstrated Milner's determination to continue refining and testing his skills as he aged. He viewed acting as a lifelong endeavor, not merely a young person's game. Milner's unwillingness to be pigeonholed by his age revealed his true dedication. Right up until his final performance in 1997 in Hollywood Squares at the age of 65, Milner maintained an unwavering passion for his craft. Despite the physical and mental demands, he found joy and fulfillment in acting until the very end. Milner's tireless work in later years spoke to his profound devotion. Milner's final chapter. After retiring from on-screen acting in 1997, Martin Milner spent the last two decades of his life quietly in Carlsbad, California, maintaining a low profile but remaining active in local charities and police organizations. He also overcame various health issues in his late 70s and early 80s before eventually passing away in 2015 at the age of 83. The cause was reported to be heart failure, stemming from his long struggle with cardiovascular disease. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Milner made only sporadic public appearances, mostly for reunions honoring his iconic shows Route 66 and Adam 12. Both programs had developed cult followings through reruns. Throwing away what strong men would kill for, the names and numbers of the most beautiful girls in and nostalgic fans welcomed the chance to see Milner one last time. Behind the scenes, Milner was a strong supporter of Variety, the children's charity, which raised money for disabled and underprivileged children. He also penned an autobiography in 2000s recounting his long career. In his 70s, Milner battled prostate cancer and heart problems, but overcame both with treatment. However, his health took a serious turn when his daughter Amy died after a battle with acute myeloid leukemia. Friends said this tragic loss diminished Milner's spirit, 
Milner's death marked the end of a legendary acting career that spanned an astonishing six decades, from 1940s radio to 1990s television. His passing was mourned by generations of fans and colleagues alike, who remembered Milner as both an iconic presence on screen and a kind soul off camera. Martin Milner's cremains were scattered at sea in a private ceremony. A memorial event was held for fans and fellow police officers, a testament to Milner's two most famous roles. The world had lost one of the last great stars of Hollywood's golden age. Passion, range, and devoted fans. Over his extensive career from 1941 to 1997, Martin Milner demonstrated a lifelong passion and dedication to his craft of acting. He leveraged this commitment into creating an incredibly wide range of memorable roles across all media that earned him a devoted, multi-generational fan base. From his very first parts as a fresh-faced teenager in the 40s, Milner fell in love with acting. In radio, film, TV, and theater, he constantly sought new challenges. Milner brought 100% effort and professionalism to every role, no matter how big or small. His passion drove him to keep growing as a performer even into his later years. Milner's expansive resume reflected the sheer breadth of his talents. He excelled in weighty dramas, nuanced character studies. Take a note, Shelley. Every time you open your mouth, a proclamation of independence comes roaring forth. Thrilling mysteries, lighthearted comedies, and family programs. Milner conveyed a universal humanity that resonated across all genres. Even today, decades after his prime, Milner maintains a devoted fan base as new generations discover his shows through reruns. He mastered the delicate balance between acting skill and likability. Milner's unique passion and talents created an enduring legacy. Whether headlining a major series or playing a supporting role, Martin Milner saw every performance as an opportunity to grow and connect with audiences. His passion and dedication over a career spanning six decades allowed him to succeed in every facet of entertainment and become a true icon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.